You're watching First News at 5. Your news and weather headlines start right now. Good afternoon, I'm Molly Martinez. We're a few hours away from the first pitch of the Larks season opener. We begin this afternoon with our sports reporter Kaylee Emery, who's joining us from the municipal ballpark with more. Kaylee, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Molly. That is right. I'm here at Bismarck Municipal Ballpark for the Lark season opener. It is exciting. I've got the GM, John Bollinger. I know you've been running around all day, so I'll make it quick here. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, year number two. Excited? Year number two. We're pumped. We got great weather. We got cold beer, hot food, so and some great baseball is about to be played. So what, what can't you be happy about? You know, last year I know that you were kind of like the man with the plan of entertainment for pretty much every game, it seemed like. So I've got to ask, what's the entertainment situation? looking like this year sure well I'm not going to tell you exactly because you got to come out and see a game this year we got 36 home games so you'll have to check that out but we have some classics from last year with all the on-field games we're bringing back some new ones we got six new entertainment acts coming to town seven fireworks shows uh, again the best compliment we got last year was John I forgot who won the game tonight but we had one heck of a time so uh, that's what we're hoping uh, that you and your family can experience and again just come out check out check us out this summer and I know that the setup is a little bit differently yep. because there's some more seating. Yes. Obviously, that's because of the uh, high demand for people wanting to come to the games, right? Yeah, we're so blessed to be in this community. I mean, we had a, a good plan. We, we really strive to provide great entertainment, but to sell out 27 or 36 games last year, I mean, that just speaks to the Bismarck Mandan community, how much they support baseball, support local. So we just we take that uh, to heart, you know. So this year, we wanted to get more people in. We added 300 more seats. Uh, we moved our family fun zone now uh, over in left field. Uh, it's going to have a bigger uh, obstacle course. Some other, uh, some other things there. Have a much bigger food pavilion in right field, a new sweet treat area, uh, which caramel corn, mini donuts, all kind of stuff. So the food and beverage, uh, it'll be, uh, there's more, a lot going on. So you just got to come check it out. All right. Thanks so much, John. I'll let you go yeah. uh, get back to all the business. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all we've got from right now from here. Otherwise, I'm going to send it to Henry Blakes. Henry, hopefully the weather is holding up for this opening day game. Hey, Kayla, Kevin Lawrence here, but that's okay. Henry, busy as well because we are tracking funnel clouds in the region. And I want to show you a video right now of a funnel cloud that was reported in the Watford City area. This came into our KFYR TV Facebook page. Uh, this is coming in from Joel, who sat, or took this video of a cold air funnel cloud. Right, thanks, Kevin. All right. A motorcycle driver from Saskatchewan, Canada, was killed Sunday night near Antler, North Dakota. The Highway Patrol says 64-year-old Judith Brown was driving from Botno to Sherwood, port of entry to Canada, when she rear-ended another motorcycle in front of her. Both drivers were taken to Trinity Hospital, where Brown later died. Both drivers were wearing helmets. The former Burley County sh deputy accused of taking meth and cell phones from an evidence crime lab pleaded not guilty to all four charges. Kerry Komorowski appeared in court earlier today for his preliminary hearing. Two Bureau of Criminal Investigation agents took to the stand to talk about the evidence they found and how they're tracing back some of Komorowski's old cases. Never went into the man of evidence lit locker. They were in the sole custody of Mr. Kromoski by signing in, being possession of it, uh, processing it, and then turning into the crime lab, and then signing it back out from the crime lab, the whole time being in his possession and not following the evidence procedure as such that it should go into. Kromoski will have a three-day trial, but the date has not yet been scheduled. The man sentenced to life without parole for murdering a Bismarck woman will have his day at the state Supreme Court. Morris Brixel Hicks was convicted for the April 2016 murder of Misty Kofelt in December. According to court records, Brickle Hicks sent his notice of appeal on January 4th, stating his Miranda rights were violated. But Assistant Burley County State's Attorney Julie Lawyer says that's not true. And Brickle Hicks voluntarily waived his rights. The case will be seen by the state's highest court on June 6th. The Bismarck man charged with 20 counts of promoting a sexual performance by a minor is slapped with more charges. Police say 50-year-old Curtis McGarvey is accused of harassing a juvenile female for nearly two years. They say they found covert cameras and hard drives at McGarvey's residence. On those hard drives were more than 50 photos, both edited and unedited, of the teenager. The list of charges you can visit our website. The Veterans Memorial in Berthold, which was dedicated just last year, was found vandalized over Memorial Day weekend. 
Sunday morning, Berthold police were notified about damages to the memorial next to City Hall. That includes damages to one of the benches and the fence around the memorial. Berthold police later received a call from a citizen about the evening the damage took place, noting suspicious activity from a dark blue or black truck in front of City Hall. They are now working to identify the truck and the driver of the vehicle. It's uh, disheartening that uh, it happened here, uh, something that we uh, were very proud of to honor our veterans. If you have any information about the incident, you can reach out to Chief Smith, Schmidt or the Berthold Police. More veteran news. Senator Hoven is traveling throughout the state talking about the VA health care bill aimed to improve treatment for veterans. Andrew Horn is here to tell us more about it. Andrew. Molly Hoven hosted a roundtable in Bismarck today about how the bipartisan legislation increases access to both long-term and medical care and makes major changes to a system that many say is plagued by bureaucratic red tape. The bill will expand the number of long-term care facilities with VA reimbursement contracts. Only 14 of the 80 nursing homes in North Dakota have contracts with the VA. The bill will also get rid of the 30-day, 40-mile rule. Now, instead of having to drive all the way to Fargo, if the community clinic, the VA clinic, doesn't have the service the veteran needs, they, they can go in uh, to the local hospital or clinic or doctor and, and get that care and have VA reimbursement for it. President Trump is expected to sign that bill on June 6th, the 74th anniversary of D-Day. All right, thanks, Andrew. A big question looming, what is going to happen to the old grocery store on Main Street in Mandan? Tonight, the city commissioners are going to be asking the public what they want. Megan Hoffman is live at the former Central Market building with a look at what to expect. Megan? Molly, tonight commissioners are holding a special meeting at this building behind me to present their plans for what to do with the space. Now, leaders are calling it the Rail Yard Project, and they're looking to revitalize West Main Street. Officials are looking to turn the former Central Market grocery store into an event hall that would also house a library. They could then sell the old library building and the old Thrifty White building. They're also interested in finding a developer to put a building on the corner of 4th Avenue and Main Street with commercial and residential spaces. Now, this meeting tonight starts at 5.30, and everyone is welcome to attend. Reporting live in Mandan for NBC North Dakota News, I'm Megan Hoffman. Ten people are running for Bismarck School Board, including Matt Saxfeen, who is up for re-election this year. Saxfeen is the Solicitor General for the state of North Dakota and has been on the BPS board for eight years. He served as president and vice president several times. Saxfeen grew up in Bismarck. His children attend Liberty Elementary and Horizon Middle School. One of the key issues he says he will be dealing with if re-elected is hiring a new long-term superintendent. One of the things that I'm going to look for in a new superintendent is a is a, a record of leadership, a record of positive culture, and a, a record of success and growth for the students. Saxman says his priority is to focus on discipline issues and mental health services for students. Those elections are on June 12th. Trending right now, ABC's Entertainment cancels its hit show Roseanne after the actress posted a racist tweet. In the tweet Monday, Roseanne Barr suggested that President Obama's former advisor, Valerie Jarrett, is a product of the, quote, Muslim Brotherhood and the Planet of the Apes. Barr tweeted an apology to Jarrett, calling it a, quote, bad joke that was in bad taste, and asked for forgiveness. The full statement from NBC Entertainment reads, Roseanne's Twitter is a statement abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values, and we have decided to cancel her show. Starbucks is closing all 8,000 U.S. stores this afternoon. More than 175,000 employees will participate in training to help combat racial bias. Last month, two African-American men were arrested in Philadelphia for using the restroom. Since then, Starbucks has implemented a new policy that allows anyone to hang out and use restroom regardless of whether or not they make a purchase. Today's closure started after the lunch rush across the country around 2 p.m., 3 p.m. local time. The body of a National Guardsman who disappeared after Sunday's flooding in Ellicott City, Maryland, has been found. The 39-year-old was swept away by floodwaters outside a restaurant in a parking lot after trying to help a woman in the area look for her cat. Family and friends describe the former Air Force member as courageous, dependable, and well-respected in the community.
All right, let's toss it over now to Kevin. Kevin, it's an exciting day for Bismarck baseball fans. It really is. Here we are with the Larks home opener. All gets underway here right around 7.30 this evening. And the this is First News at 5. A new study suggests stronger alcohol policies may save lives. Researchers from Boston Medical Center looked at state drunk driving laws and taxes on alcohol sales. They found states with stricter policies had fewer alcohol related crash deaths. Experts say just small changes across all states could save hundreds of lives each year. About one third of traffic deaths involve a driver impaired by alcohol. Coming up, experts are expecting a record summer travel season. We'll break down how many people are expected to take the skies. Today started off with a huge drop amid several concerns on Wall Street. The Dow fell 430 points or 1.7 percent. The Nasdaq and the S&P also saw a drop. Investors are watching two big challenges in the world. Italy is headed for new elections and investors worry it could vote to leave the euro. Wall Street also reacted to the House to White House's decision to impose tariffs on $50 billion worth of goods from China. The Trump administration has also placed new limits on Chinese investments in the U.S. And if you're planning to fly somewhere this summer, be prepared for some packed planes. The airlines are expecting to carry a record number of passengers. Phil LeBeau has more on this busy summer ahead.